from Washington, this is VOA News. I'm Jonathan Jones reporting. A U.S. drone strike has killed at least seven Islamic State militants in central Yemen. The strikes hit two cars carrying armed individuals in Albaida province. American forces have repeatedly launched drone and airstrikes in Albaida and southeastern Shabwa province, where dozens of Al-Qaeda and IS members are believed to be based. Two Somali citizens, an African Union soldier from Uganda, and four Al-Shabaab militants were killed in an ambush early Wednesday on the outskirts of Mogadishu. Gunfire followed the explosion of an improvised explosive device that targeted an AU military vehicle. The U.S. House of Representatives has approved bipartisan legislation to block the flow of illegal funds to Iran-backed Hezbollah militants and also to sanction Hezbollah for using civilians as human shields. The measures were approved by a voice vote on Wednesday in a blow to the group, which is designated a terrorist organization, and lawmakers say it has close ties to the government of Iran. The bill that targets Hezbollah funding places sanctions on people and businesses engaged in fundraising and recruitment for the group. On Thursday, in a further lash at Iran, the House is expected to vote on placing sanctions on Tehran's ballistic missile program. Thursday's vote concerns the Iran Ballistic Missiles and International Sanctions Enforcement Act, which places sanctions on Iran if it tries to manufacture, acquire, possess, develop, transport, transfer, or use ballistic missiles or ballistic missile launch technology. This is VOA News. The World Food Program warns of a humanitarian catastrophe in the Democratic Republic of Congo's Kazai region unless urgent assistance arrives as widespread severe hunger grips the conflict-ridden province. Correspondent Lisa Schlein reports for VOA from Geneva. The World Food Program has declared the Kasai region a level three emergency, which signifies a large-scale humanitarian crisis. The agency accordingly is ramping up its emergency response in hopes of averting a disastrous outcome. WFP spokeswoman Bettina Lucia says in the worst off communities, nine out of 10 people are hungry. Our number one concern as in many places are, of course, the condition of young children, of pregnant women, breastfeeding mothers, because the conflict is really exacerbating the malnutrition rates in Greater Kasai. Lucia says WFP plans to reach nearly half a million people with food aid by the end of December and accelerate the surge early next year. Lisa Schlein for VOA News, Geneva. The U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations, Nikki Haley, issued a stern warning to South Sudan's president on Wednesday, telling him the hate and the violence that we're seeing has to stop, or the U.S. will reconsider its financial support for the country. Haley spoke to reporters after meeting with President Salva Kiir. She said, it was a very honest conversation. I basically said the United States had invested well over $11 billion in South Sudan and that we were now questioning that investment. I told him we couldn't deny the stories about his military. Turkey has freed eight human rights activists pending the outcome of their trials for alleged terrorism. Those freed Wednesday include Amnesty International's Turkey director, Idil Ezer, and German and Swiss citizens. They were arrested in July while attending a digital security workshop. They have been behind bars ever since. A top U.S. State Department official on Wednesday urged Kosovo officials to ratify a border demarcation agreement with Montenegro. It's the last remaining criteria to be fulfilled before Kosovo can benefit from visa-free travel to the European Schengen Zone. And thousands of pages of long classified documents about the investigation into the assassination of President John F. Kennedy in 1963 will be released to the public Thursday. The documents are contained in more than 3,000 files. There's more on these and other late-breaking and developing stories from around the world, around the clock, at voanews.com and on the VOA News mobile app. I'm Jonathan Jones reporting from the world headquarters of The Voice of America in Washington. That's the latest world news from VOA.